I know a chessboard has nothing to do with craps. This week's video will show you exactly how I built the mold, which will be used in next week's video to build the custom 23 and a half inch by 23 and a half inch chessboard. Hey, my name is Joe. This is my craps master journey. Let's make it yours too. We begin this build off this week using parts A, D, and E from last week's video. I'll leave a link in the description below to that video. I also purchased some CA glue off of Amazon to help complete this portion of the build. Originally I was going to use the Gorilla glue that I bought from Lowe's, but that ended up not working to what I wanted to do. So here's how I'm using the glue to attach parts D and E to the base, which is part A. So I'm using that little squeeze bottle which has a gel in it, then I use an accelerator that I spray on the edge of the board. And then I'll make sure that it lines up flat and square and I'll just press it onto the side, push onto it a little bit there. And it's a pretty almost instantaneous connection or bond to the piece of wood. So just those couple of seconds pushing on it and what happens is it's a solid connection right there. So that's pretty amazing. It's my first time using CA glue. So I was actually pretty impressed with that. This is gonna be the other side that we're gonna do up. Again, we just did, made a bead on the bottom of it, put a little bit of accelerator on there, press up against it. I, I'm going fast mode here, but it's, it kind of gives you how fast it actually works. The third side, we're gonna do the side and the bottom along the edge here. We'll put some more accelerator on, glue it up, push it on and it's pretty bonded on there. We'll do our fourth side coming up here. And that's going to pretty much complete the outside of the mold that we'll be using next week. Here we're we'll going to be using some spacers or three eighths inch spacers. We're going to put one on each corner on that far corner there. So we'll have each side is actually covered. And we're using part B, which we also cut last week from that quarter inch plywood. And we're just placing it in there so that way it's gonna be up tight against both the sides. So that way the opposite two sides will be square and the same distance away from those outside walls. Um, right now we're just checking for fit, but we're gonna take it out. Put some of that glue on there and when I put it on there I said I was going to do a V shape. Let's see what it actually turns out to be. So we did a, oh not a V, an X. And then we did a star. And then we did a little bit of glue around the outside. So I guess you know the main goal here is just to get that gel glue spread around or part A of the glue spread around to all different parts. So that way we put the accelerator on and it actually sticks pretty nicely to the uh, base of the mold. So here we're going to put in, make sure you get up tight against both of the spacers so that way it's equal side all the way around. And we push down, make sure it's secured. And that's all, it's just a couple seconds and it's good. So that spacer came on and I think I might have glued that spacer in, that second spacer. So I'm going to go grab a pair of pliers here and we will get that out. It pops out relatively easy. Um, so now it popped out. And we're gonna move on to the next section where we're gonna use part C. And those are all the little squares that we cut out of the center of that half inch plywood. Then we're gonna use 1 8 inch spacers in between the squares that we're putting on here. The spacers that I used on the outside, I said were about an inch and 3 eighths. They actually should have been one inch and that's one of the mistakes I made on, on make, when making this mold. Um, but I'm gonna have to do something later in the build to help recover or or make up for that mistake. And I'll show you later what I mean by how it was a mistake a little bit later in this video. But right now what we're doing is we're spacing out the first row of squares. I wanted to make sure that it was wide enough and, and that the, the measurements at the time that I thought were correct were correct. So the goal is remember the chessboard is eight squares by eight squares, so there's gonna be a total of 64 squares. We're just checking to make sure that there's eight of them in that first row. them up right here one two three four five six seven eight that's good so now we're going to take the spaces out we're going to start it back over and 
and this time we'll actually glue them in. So make sure you make sure that they're up tight against those outside spacers, those inch and three eighths that I'm using now. Again, they should have been one inch wide spacers. So we're gonna put the gel on the glue on the block first, and then we're gonna use the accelerator on the board. It'll actually just stick right down. Again, make sure they're up tight against the spacers on both edges or both sides of the, of the board there. Press down just for a few seconds and that bond is tight. You can see I'm pulling on it, nothing comes out. Good, we'll put that eighth inch spacer in. Do the next one up and we're just gonna kind of super speed this along so you can kind of see how the process goes. So the first row, we're just putting that eighth inch spacer in between each one of them, gluing them down, moving on to the next one. And uh, that way they're actually aligned properly and they'll be square as we go through. So that was number six, this is number seven. And we get number eight. The next row now we're gonna start up against that back side tight. We're gonna put a spacer in between row one and two. And in column one and two we'll have another spacer. So we actually use two of them. Here are a couple rows in. Right about in here is where I noticed that mistake and I kind of kicked myself for doing that. But there was no turning back since I had them all glued in already. But if you look at the spacers that are up on top, them are inch and three eighths. Again, they should have been our one inch wide, but <laughs> way in the end there, that left side had no space, but that's the right side has a ton of space. So it's definitely off center. Again, we're gonna have to make a correction once we add that to the table. Here's the same thing, really small space on that side. We got a really wide space there. And my original thought was to put numbers and letters on there. So how a normal chessboard has numbers up on one side and, and letters on the other side so you can designate the rolls and the columns or the files in the columns, uh, if you roll, if, if you will. Uh, but. I probably not going to do that either and again we'll cover that in a future video how we're going to make that covered up mistake. So this is going to be our last row again up tight against that side wall. We have an eighth inch spacer in there and then we have an eighth inch spacer in between the squares. I got to the point where they're getting in so tight because I was pushing them I usually actually had to use a pliers to pop out that eighth inch spacer but it actually turned out really super nice as far as the uniformity goes of the two and this will be our last square coming in right here. Just pulling everything off and there's our finished product that's the mold where we're gonna make the mold for the chest part. So that's kind of like a reverse mode uh, of what we're gonna be pouring a little bit here. So next part that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually level off that board. So I put some two shims on there on the far uh, right corner and the near right corner. So that way I can level off the board. We're using uh, some silicone that I got off of Amazon and I'll leave a link in the description below on the Type of silicone that I did use and here's a picture of it right now and if you click on that link and if you order some I'll actually get some credit for that so I would greatly appreciate the support again all the money that I make off of these videos will be going towards uh, making the video here and, and making the, the board itself so there's part B and the other one's part A that's coming up and if you mix them equally they should cure and it'll uh, make a good mold so um, we're going to do that just exactly that. We're going to make them mix them up equally here um, in just a few seconds and we'll start pouring the mold itself. So that's what the mix of B or A looks like and then we'll have a cup of B come in here and then what we're going to do is we're going to use a third container and we'll mix the two of them together so I'll pour that into I think I am using a, a mixing cup here yeah, a measuring cup and I just take part A and part B mix it together and make sure that you scrape everything off the sides of the cups that you're pouring from so that we can make sure that it's an equal amount of both sides 
Again, one side's gonna be the actual silicone, the other side's an actual cure or accelerant, so it helps the silicone spread a little bit further. Um, the, the silicone that we're using, we have about a 40 minute work time, so that way you make sure that you can get everything poured and everything molded to how you want it to go in about 40 minutes or less, and then that should be pretty decent, and then it starts setting up at that time. And again, that reaction uh, between the two parts is actually a heat-based reaction. So once it starts heating up and then it, it starts curing, it starts getting a little bit harder to, to use in that. Um, I'm pouring it from a distance. Uh, every piece of literature that I read is if, if you pour it from a distance, it helps eliminate any bubbles that get trapped in the, in the silicone. I was actually pretty impressed with the silicone I used because the amount of bubbles that were uh, present during the curing process was very minimal. So the first pour, I just went through some of the cracks, um, and you can see it leaking off onto the sides as I'm pouring in that, which is basically just spreading out. It's, it's, it's starting to level out on its own. Um, and we go through several different uh, mixes here, uh, several different attempts at doing this. And I think I would do about four or five mixes up. So that would be, I forgot how many ounces I actually used on this pour. I think we got one more coming up here. That should be the end of the pour for the mold itself. Now I let it sit for about 24 to 48 hours before I actually told, took the mold off. And here's where we're gonna start taking the mold off, I believe. And there's my granddaughter and the girlfriend tapping her saying, get back here, get back here. And I'm hollering her, don't do that, don't do that. Kind of funny. <laughs> She's a little cutie in that, but to get a little punch in the butt there, get back, there she goes. <laughs> So while the mold was curing, it actually sprung a leak in the corner. So if you look on the corners there, I have some uh, duct tape that I put on there to hopefully help, or at least my intent was to help minimize the, the amount of pour out or, or leaking from there. And um, duct tape probably would have worked better if I put it on when it was not wet, but it was wet so it really didn't hold much. So I actually had a pretty big puddle of, of silicone on the floor as well as my, my table saw there. Uh, but it did not seem to affect the mold. So here we're taking off the sides of the mold. And remember those are CA glued on there, so it was a little bit um, a little bit tough to pull off, but it, it came off pretty decent, pretty decent. And here we're taking the actual mold off of the form that we made earlier on in this video. Um, and it was a little tough because all those individual squares were stuck down with that with that silicone. Uh, so it takes a little bit of work, but it's, it's coming off here. And I was actually impressed with once it got started, how easy it actually did come off. I did have to pull a little bit. I was afraid of tearing that silicone, but it really did not even come close to tearing it off. But you can see me pulling it out of those individual cracks. You can see the mold as it comes out here. There's a couple wet spots on there of spots that either didn't cure or didn't mix properly, but that wiped off pretty easily. So there's our mold here. And if you notice, there's a lot of uh, areas where it kind of bled through. So those will cut off and we'll clean up the mold a little bit. And those wet spots will actually wipe out and actually clean up pretty nice. We used to be a piece off right there. Um, in this next section here, we're going to actually go through. We're just actually trim it up so that way it's nice and clean. So that's the mold that we originally made. The blue part is the actual chessboard mold that we'll be using next in next week's video. And I'm gonna pull in a piece here now. This is something that I ordered off of Amazon. It was an extra large chessboard. So look how chintzy the one is from Amazon compared to the one that I made. So which one would you rather use? Um, but the reason I bought that chessboard mold was so it came with actual chess pieces that I could mold. And I'll show you that in the next video as well. But here I am trimming up the, the silicone and um, just making it so that way when I do pour the chessboard, it is a clean, or, and everything comes up pretty square, which I actually am impressed with. That part of the video I did do, I did record it already. I still have to go through the editing phase. Um, so, and it'll go through how long it took time-wise, but there's our finished mold. Uh, thank those people here that made donations. 
Uh, these are all contributors towards the project. If you'd like to help donate towards the cost of the build or towards the delivery fee to transport the table to the winning bidder, please click the link in the description below this video here. And I'll give you a link towards my PayPal account and you can just make a direct donation there. You can also support my channel by clicking the like and subscribe button. Every little bit of help is greatly appreciated. And I will also leave links to the other videos associated with this table build as they become available. Comments are welcome on this video. Please let me know what you guys are thinking. If you're liking this series, how it's going. The total time that we spent on the project so far is about 40 hours. So that's 30 hours of prep, two hours shopping, three hours cutting wood, five hours building that chessboard mold, plus obviously the time that I had to let it cure. But actual work time was about 40 hours. Total cost so far, and this is including weeks one and week three, we have Menards 255.83, Amazon 223.68, and Lowe's 785, which is a waste of money at the Lowe's, so you can actually <laughs> deduct that, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, my name is Joe, this is my Craps Master Journey. Let's make it yours too. See you guys in the next video.